Hi, this is Bob Weiss. I'm the host of Shaking Your World. Cheers. My friends, welcome home. Yet another series of the Shakers cooking classes. Today we have a, um, a caramelized onion cook-off. My very good friend, very good friend of the house, Paul Borquist is here to uh, apply a couple of tongs and uh, knives and see what happens. We have with us a, a commentator today and a judge. This is uh, the famous foodie Evan, who will give his uh, very informed opinions on the nuance of what we're doing. Yeah, there we are. Oh, there you go. So, not for the faint of heart, and uh, I guess we are off to the races. We did have the luxury of going to the uh, West Dallas Farmer's Market today to score some beautiful pick this morning onions. Cheers. Cheers. I have to admit the onions look very good. So. Oh, that is good. So you start with good ingredients. You have bacon render. <laughs> I do have bacon to render, sir. Far be me not to indulge. Now, all I want to do is uh, chunk up this bacon. It'll be pulled out of the pan after I render it down. That's all I'm going to use is that delicious bacon fat. Thank and then, you. sir, push the magic button. Magic button. Mm -hmm. To uh, assist my rendering, I'm going to have a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in here. Greek, of course. What else is there? And while that's working, I'm going to take down an onion. Yep. Well. Bob certainly has better knife skills than I. I don't do it often enough. I like the chunkier onions. I think you get a, they taste sweeter um, when you do finally get a mouthful of them instead of the little ones. But that's just my preference. I have no special way of cutting them. Um, I kind of like the uh, various sizes in there. A lot of times when I do onions, they're for either brisket or sausages or something like that. And uh, some people like the little... The little onions, some people like the long strands, so I just kind of go with that. No special way. And again, I certainly like the larger chunks. Not necessarily as uniform as some like to make them. And that comes with knife skills that I don't have. Well, as you said, like anything else, it's just a matter of uh, practice and being back here every day, I have no option but to uh, work on my night skills. Well, I do notice when I get on a roll, and I'm doing it for a few days in a row, I get my system a little more streamlined. So I'm just cutting these pole to pole, top to bottom. And then worried about the, uh, the fresh dirt on the outside wrappers because I'll be pulling off those leaves and work my way around that. So I began on high, I'm gonna back this down a little bit. I do have a touch of olive oil in there to kind of facilitate or expedite the process in the induction. There really is no right or wrong way to do onions. And like anything else you cook, cook for yourself and the people that you care about and uh, you know, make it count for them. But as far as following a specific recipe goes, I just don't cotton to that, nor do I recommend you do that. 
Uh, have fun, experiment, and uh, find your own way. Find which onions work the best for you. Some people prefer the, uh, the higher sugar content in the yellows. Um, right after that would be the reds. I think the whites have the least amount of convertible sugar. Well, if you look at it, uh, that's what they always sing about the yellows. And I think what that honestly does is it kind of dummy proofs it, if, it, if not, Bob, just because of the, uh, the little bit of oil that you get in there and how easily they are uh, caramelized. Um, I prefer working with the reds because I like that, that nice bold red flavor that is, I think, fantastic, either raw or caramelized, even sauteed for that matter. But um, they do require a little more maintenance also. Agreed. So the way I cut these down is, again, I've, I've taken the onions, I just do them pole to pole, I get the outer skin off of that, and you can see that I, I turn these. So I will begin with the uh, densest part on top, that's where my fingers are, and then I'll rotate that around so I maintain my touch on the firmest part. That way I have better control over the onion. If you just cut it this way all the way down, you get to this point where it's going to be harder to grab just like that. So if you rotate the onion, rotate the poles, it's fairly easy to do. Other thing is that if you have a sharp knife, there's much less chance of you frying over your onions. We also agree on that. Sharp knives, that's the tool to have. Um, actually, I am going to have to watch this later just to watch Bob's knife skills because mine certainly aren't nearly as uh, refined as his. But we both agree on sharp knives. And a sharp knife is a safe knife. Well, by the same token, I'm sure you're a much better shot than I am. So. Is that shot? We're doing shots already? <laughs> well, that blend was, uh, was awfully nice. It was delicious. And in, in fact, uh, just because we had a little work to do, I felt uh, bad putting it away right now. Okay. We have more. <laughs> much, much more. Bob, can I just uh, steal just a little of the olive oil? Just a tad. Yes, sir. Just to help me get those brown bits up. Yep, 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 yep. Now, really, when we're rendering, all of that brown stuff that you see there on the on the pan, that's all your flavor. Right there. And you want to do the best you can to get that mixed up with everything. Nothing burnt. That's just goodness. Agreed. Agreed. That is just goodness. If you don't mind, I'm going to toss these guys in there and you go right this. ahead. I'm going to start right here. Uh, this is not a race after all, so it's all good. And I will say it is uh, certainly a pleasure, Bob, to uh, be back here with you in a kitchen that's made for cooking. Our kitchens at home are kind of made for family meals, and it's really not for cooking for a whole crowd, usually a smaller family. So when I can get into a professional kitchen and utilize everything they have, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, we, of course, are honored for the fact that you can spend all your day to, uh, to come and play with us. So good to have you back. Good to be back, Bob. Good to be back. Uh, because when we start cooking these onions down, they start sweating, they start caramelizing, they do shrink up quite a bit. And I do notice uh, people when they make onions, especially uh, if you're doing a tailgate party or you're doing something around the house cookout uh, or a cookout of some kind, People don't use enough onions. And before you know it, you went through all that effort and you throw a couple of uh, onions in the pan and the next thing you know, they shrink down there absolutely nothing and you got yourself a nice little cup of uh, caramelized <laughs> onions for a whole lot of work. So I prefer to do them much like you in a bigger uh, bigger bag. I think Paul's absolutely correct about that. It's just like spinach. So you're gonna end up with summers maybe 20% of what you began with, if that. So uh, the, the standard thought on, on caramelizing onions is that this is a relatively slow, long process that can take 45 minutes to an hour. I think we're going to probably uh, cut some of that time out on here. We can adjust that a few different ways, but the, uh, the standard thought on this is that you cook low 
Um, I prefer more of a medium heat. I set up my pans up high and then I back them down a little bit. So now that we're here, the magic's gonna happen by itself. Uh, at a certain point, I will be adding in some wine. I've got a, a Moscato here right now, a lovely Corval. Nothing particularly special about the wine. It does have a higher degree of fruit acid to it. I'm also gonna use a little bit of a rice wine vinegar. You'll notice that at uh, one point, Paul had asked about a balsamic vinegar. Uh, they both work marvelous, but I do think you should have something with acetic acid in it, something that is vinegary, whether it's wine or vinegar, that just kind of accelerates the process and helps it draw out some of the sweetness, the natural sweetness of the onions. So at this point, we can, uh, we can really step away and have a cigar, maybe another bourbon while Mother Nature does her thing. I will explain one thing. I prefer, um, I salt liberally uh, before I reduce my heat. I want to get um, some of that moisture out there that the salt uh, does draw out of the onion. Mm -hmm. That helps me uh, with my nonstick, and then I don't have to go overboard with any of my oils um, because I've already got the, uh, I've rendered down the bacon already. So I prefer when I get some, get some of that liquid out of there, and you can do that real easy just with some salt. Salt and onions, they're partners all day long. Uh, towards the end, we'll probably throw some pepper in there. But salt and onions, uh, they get along just fantastic, at least in my opinion. I agree. All right, so we'll resume in a few short minutes. In the meantime, uh, we're going to drink. Thank you. We're going to add uh, any apple cider vinegar or anything. Rice wine vinegar. Rice wine vinegar, just a uh, little more liquidy. I forgot about that. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to put a bit of the uh, Moscato in here just to uh, help to free up some of that font from the bottom and to make this move ahead a little bit. And again, that's that acid I was talking about that makes such a significant difference in the product. I'm also, since I've got uh, additional wine in there, I'm going to take some of this coconut palm sugar hey, from, hey, from hey. Indonesia. No one said anything about coconut palms here. You didn't ask. I think I yeah, sent you're that. right, I didn't ask. You sent something out there at some point. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Was it an email? Could have been. All right. <laughs> I wasn't kidding before. The uh, red onions do require more maintenance. Just like redheads. Ah, uh, yes. So what, uh, what color are you looking for with these? So like a strawberry blonde? You're looking for a mahogany roux? What are you looking for? In onions? Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, they're going to be like that. Okay. That's what they'll end up being. Okay. I think I used uh, reds in our originals. Okay. I think you're right. So you, you and you laughed yellow, at me. You used yellows, you used the yellows, you used the reds. Correct. I like the flavor of the reds. They don't render down as nicely as the yellows. So as I said, I wasn't bullshitting. They take more maintenance. You've got to move them around a little more because you don't get the, uh, the liquid doesn't come off as easy as it does. But they do look prettier. They do look yeah, prettier. Yeah, so I'm going to go for a, between a blonde and a, you know, maybe kind of a dirty blonde. Dirty blonde here. It does that. Beautiful, natural smells. Speaking of Michaela, she was here and said she will be stopping back, so. Yeah, she sent me a text, and I know, I think she has to work all night tonight, but she said, yeah, I'll stop down. Today is the first day of the mask mandate in the city of Milwaukee, so tonight when we are open, we of course shall have masks on. Better to, uh, to suffer to have a mask on for a month than remain open for business, I guess is uh, the way I'm looking at this. Beautiful caramelization, the conversion of the sugars right there, that's just gorgeous. He's still probably about 15 or 20 minutes out on that. I but, would say. Uh, it's looking real nice. Mine's looking a little bit sodden right now. It's as if I had put uh, an additional amount of wine in or something for uh, cinematic effect. So I'm gonna have to uh, babysit this a little more than I would. That's all right, but that cooks down, right? It that does. just cooks down. It evaporates. And like I said before, this is not a race, so we'll be uh, just hunky-dory in a few minutes. One thing I don't do is cover my onions. I see some people that uh, make it a point to cover, put a lid on top. I prefer the natural evaporation takes place. Otherwise, you stew the onions, take out a different texture, and it just 
not appealing to me. Nope, so. absolutely. What happens, yeah. and it loses is uh, uh, they still feel chunky when you bite into them, um, but it they get, they get noodly. They go. And there's nothing appealing about that, and a lot of that onion flavor now goes to the evaporation in that liquid that's stewing them. Right. Um, another thing I like to do when I am serving uh, caramelized onions, I don't put them in if I'm doing sausage or brisket. I'll cover the brisket maybe with some onions, sausages, I'll throw some in the pot that we have the sausage and beer in, but other than that, they stay by themselves because I want them tasting like onions. Right. The same thing if we were doing green peppers or anything like that. Yep. Serve them off to the side, you throw a little in for color, but when you put them on whatever meat you're enjoying, they taste like what they taste like. Absolutely. It's not like a soup onion. Now we certainly could have kept our skins from this as well and used those to make a French onion soup. I, uh, I tend to think that the best soups come about making all those little scraps. So the, uh, the end pieces, the, uh, the peelings, the shavings, the skins, I think that really is where the flavor is. Well, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that a French staple? Isn't that, that uh, a French that, technique? We use fact. every little thing out there, right? Absolutely. Right. I did score some uh, beautiful liver today, by the way. So liver. Some calf liver, just in case somebody wanted to go that way with the onions. And I, you know, people often say to me, my God, I would never think about eating a cow liver. But the reality is that if you've eaten hot dogs, you've had cow liver inside of that hot dog. Provided it's a beef hot dog, of course. These onions on a somewhat cooler day because it will be in the high 90s or hundreds this weekend. Is that you can you can save these for a week and they'll maintain just perfectly in a cool environment like a refrigerator. I was going to ask you about that, Bob. Um, so if I put up a big batch and I throw them in the fridge, you start, you're telling me a week? You got a week. Yep. Okay. They never make it that long by no. by me or when I go to a cookout, they never make it that long. No. But uh, that's good to know because I've often wondered that how long they were good for. So far, I think it's important to notice the difference in the two different types of onions. Bob is using the yellow ones, so he doesn't have to work too much. He leaves them there, and he, add, he added a little uh, Moscato wine, which has some sugars in it, and that will help the caramelization. The other, the other batch has red onions, which need a little more work, because they don't, they don't exclude as much water. So there's a chat, so if it doesn't mix them constantly, they cook unevenly and they may burn a little bit. So this is basically the base two techniques. Uh -huh. Now Bob, you had a, a piece of onion to, to kind of show where we're at in the process? Yeah, I'm just gonna say, you know, here's what I began with that I, I cut initially, right? So it's, it's nice and pearless and it's got, it's obviously very firm. And this is what we're into right now. So we're taking on this, this lovely kind of blonde complexion at the moment. It's gonna continue a bit further and they're obviously soft and supple and pliable, not like this. But these are great to eat too. And I have noticed, uh, because it does take a while to uh, get these things going, that once they get going, and especially when the sugars come out, it really does snowball, doesn't it? Yep. That's when we really gotta start watching for sticking and, and things of that nature. Yes. So since we're talking about uh, things overall, this is uh, something I did earlier today. I bought in some of that liver I was talking about a moment ago, and for some of the people that were here, I did some onions on the side. So I caramelized these a little bit darker. I put some balsamic in here, extracted a bit more flavor from them, and they were just sumptuous to go along with that liver. So I'm not looking for the same color on these because we'll use these for a variety of other things, but when I have a a more full-bodied meat, like liver, like a brisket, I generally go a little bit darker by going for something like a pizza or something like that, and then I go a little bit lighter. And I have noticed that on your uh, pizzas, uh, is it the Redondo that has uh, the uh, uh, caramelized onions? Oh, yeah. They are quite a bit lighter. Yep. Um, so, you're not undercooking them, you're just not caramelizing them as far, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Because it still has a great flavor to it. Yep. And it holds up better to the pizza, yep. would that be it? All I right. think so, I think all so. Right. But that's all personal preference. You can do it any way you like. These would be outstanding on that same pizza. 
that with the goat cheese. Oh, nice. I'm really surprised that there aren't more vegetarian dishes that utilize caramelized onions. It's I think, like, like a shortcut with that or something. I think people are afraid of onions. Mm -hmm. You know what? Because they think of that one big onion slice that goes on like a cheeseburger or something, and they get afraid of it. Um, until you make the caramelized ones, and I know when I've gone to Coca's, I tell people just to try them, and they go, that doesn't even taste like onion. No, it does, but it doesn't taste like the onion they're used to or yep. what they're thinking, on yep. a salad or something like that, when you're having raw onion. And I think it's, they're fantastic. Absolutely. That's why I spend a lot of time on the, and I don't want to call them a condiment, because I do put effort into them, but I spend a lot of time on those because I think it makes everything come together. I do. Agreed. Stay there, bartender. Can we have uh, two more of the Blanton's bourbon, please? Thank you. Now, you see where Bob's at. Um, his are starting to uh, evaporate off. And because I can't do that with the red ones, I'm going to add a little more salt again. We don't have to be afraid of it. We're not over-salting it, but we don't need to be afraid of it. And look at those colors starting to come together. Oh, the pinks, the magentas, the white little tan you've got going on, that's it's gorgeous. Well, thank you, good sir. Thank you, sir. Here's to a good day. Love blends. Next time I might do it with a uh, onion chaser. Why not? Okay, we'll try a little bit cheap in here. You can taste the salt that he used, but it's very subtle, it's not overwhelming, and these still have a very oniony taste. Rice wine vinegar. A little bit less than an ounce on each of ours. Just on the back side to finish this up. And then, because I'm just that guy with a uh, proclivity for citrus, I'm going to do one other thing. I have a Spanish orange liqueur here. Oh boy. And just a little touch in there. Look at that. Just a little touch. I'm going to add just a little touch of magic, so it's really not going to come out on the camera, but it's magic. Probably closer to sorcery. Oh, indeed, yeah. The colors you have are just, look at that gorgeous, that lovely tan, a little bit of brown, that pink, the magenta, full scale, that just looks appetizing. Well, that's what I like because I like to combine them with, uh, uh, when I do put uh, serve them off, especially with like a hearty sausage or your brisket, I like to have the red and green yellow peppers and then this next to it, and that's why one of the reasons I do enjoy the red. Gorgeous. Or and, if you and think about the Italian flag being red, green, and white, you'd have red peppers, green peppers, and of course the white onions in between. It's all good. It's all food. Benny. And the Jets are... And I'll be honest, I think the uh, people aren't afraid of the reds nearly as much as they are the whites. You're, you're probably correct. Again, I go back to that that big onion that are often on cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. That is, can be overpowering. Yep. So I just increased my uh, heat, the speed, if you will, a little bit. I want to uh, just finish off the evaporation process. I want to condense as many of those flavors that are in this broth and to get in, back into the onions. Whereas Paul has just got a real nice thing going on where he doesn't have to do that. 
And I'm going to leave this just for a little while. And uh, when I do uh, uh, finish off with a little balsamic, I will raise the heat just a tad, just to get her going and then bring it down right back down. I have done these on scene, by the way, at a cook-off on the side uh, burner of a grill. And uh, after a few cocktails, may have blackened the onions rather than caramelized <laughs> them. <laughs> and it was, you use everything. The three-day sauces, There's the stocks, the demi-glace, whatever else, that's exactly what it is. You can pound as much flavor as you possibly can out of everything, the simplest ingredient. What I took away from that was uh, use everything and butter. And butter. Okay, so, so far, He's using red onions, he's using white onions. Okay. He put some Moscato wine in his, he didn't. He just put salt, more salt and uh, vinegar. They both put vinegar. Mm. So far. So far. Well, last night Bob was telling us about this when we were here. Mm -hmm. And I think he has a few, I know he has a few tricks up his sleeve of things he wants to put in there. I asked him if he would make the onion ring. He laughed. He doesn't fry. We're getting, there. We're getting there. So the earlier parts I was talking about wanting this little blonde complexion, and this is pretty much what we have going on. That is a fairly blonde look, at least to my perspective. Now growing up, uh, Grandma and Mom used vinegar, and I just hated that splash into the pan. Yep. Just did not like it. But uh, after they cooked it off and you forgot that they put vinegar in there, all of a sudden you're, I'm wondering where did that, that tang and that beautiful deep flavor come from? And it took years before I realized, well, that was the vinegar and you got to put up with it for about 30 seconds. Just like in lentils, it's that vinegar that makes all the difference and opens up the flavor of everything, frankly. Uh, we use it in a lot of dishes here, whether it's the Caribbean type things like the jerk or something else. Those acids really play such an important part. You know, that's interesting you said that because I have noticed for your uh, uh, Caribbean dishes, when you are using the vinegar, you get that, that, real, that real pungent, I don't even know how to describe it, that real pungent smell that comes off, but then it just cuts through all of that pepper in that, and once that pungent smell cooks off, you've got all of the goodness left, and it really does, and I, I don't know, I'm not good at combining stuff like that, but it, it is perfect. It's perfect. And it just, and you got your acid in there, and, and we all know we need that, right? We do. We definitely do. But the colors are really starting to come together now. Love my redheads. As I do my blondes, so I would say at this point, I'm pretty much done. All right. I've got a little, I do have a little more work to do. I'm probably about uh, seven to 10 minutes out right now. And all I'm looking for is just a little more uh, caramelization and then I'll finish it off with my uh, balsamic vinegar. All right, so what I've done is I've taken some of the, uh, the well-caramelized onions from earlier today when I did a batch of liver. I'm going to get some more liver. A uh, little touch of olive oil in here in a separate pan, but I've got some of the flavor from the previous onions so that's going to carry forth into the onion, uh, liver rather. So not a tremendous amount, just enough to carry the flavor into it. And my liver's over here, so I'm going to step around you guys. Mmm, liver. Yes, we're not afraid of the salt when we're doing the onions. Because you add a lot of vinegar and, and that pulls out that liquid, and a lot of it just cooks off. Liver's really going to cook pretty quickly. It's then cut. 
This was butchered this morning by Bunzel's in Milwaukee. It's a premium cow's liver. And many people think that they don't like liver or haven't had liver before, but as I, I say on a regular basis, if you've had things like beef hot dogs, you've had liver, maybe a small percentage, but you've had liver before. So really simple, we've got the flavors coming up from the onions, a little salt, a little pepper, really nothing else to adorn this. Um, a little, if I had a little splash of butter on here, that would probably enhance that a little bit. Butter helps everything, doesn't it? It sure does. And again, through the, uh, the benefit of our actual kitchen here, we've got butter. And you did mention Bunzel's. Those are good folks up there. Those are real good folks. Uh, from my perspective, the, uh, the best butcher shop in the city of Milwaukee. The pig roasts I've done over the years, 99 out of 100 have been from Bunzel's. Great people. Quality meats. Super nice people. Now I'm adding uh, my balsamic vinegar, which is also very sugary and will help this process of caramelization. Just mix that up. We're going to try to get rid of all of that vinegar, that classic vinegar taste out of there. And we're getting real close here. And you probably noticed that our balsamic, or the balsamic that Paul is using is on the thicker side. We, uh, we do reduce it in-house, so it's not quite tar-like, but it's much thicker. And uh, in the process, that burns off some of that, uh, that vinegar uh, aroma as well. And that just makes it more streamlined for the kitchen, is that correct? That's correct. Oh, that's delicious, by the way. How are you doing over there with those onions, Bob? I am ready to plate anytime you are. All I am going to do is uh, one last seasoning, and I think I'm ready to plate, sir. Just a little of that coarse brown pepper. I don't want to, uh, or the coarse black pepper. I don't want to do that too soon. I don't want to scorch it or burn it. I know in some cooking styles that is uh, preferred. But for something like this, because it's usually, uh, it's complementing the dish you're making, you don't want it to be overwhelming, so. But we all use salt and pepper, so it is gonna tie in together with uh, usually anything hearty that we serve, and I know that, that liver looks fantastic. Summertime, you've got a cookout coming up. This is a perfect way to serve these, just as a side. Um, obviously, in the restaurant, we do it a little bit differently here. But uh, if you're doing this at home, you got a gig going on, you got people coming over. This is different than just glopping thing in a bowl. you got them right in front of you, and here they are. I think that really makes a big difference. Those are going to be exquisite when you get some on that plate. Gonna get every last bit out of there. Neither wet nor dry, they're just they're beautiful. And well, we'll see what our critics say. Where do I go with that, Let's sir? Just right on top and push that button. Which one, sir? Right back on? Yep. And I should. a little. The 
You can also do is take some uh, fine green eye, uh, um, onions and slice those as a chiffonade and put that on top, a little color contrast, oh. but it's ready to go right now. I so, like that. Let's see what our, uh, our critics have to say about these. Thank you, sir. Very subtle taste. Uh, the sugar is, that comes out of the Muscat is there. Um, perfect balance with the uh, with the vinegar. This and very light in taste. Let's try Polis. Mm. Mm. They're both excellent. Mm -hmm. If if this is the uh, the lobster of the uh, of the caramelized onions, this is the heavy meat of the caramelized onions. The taste is stronger. You the the balsamic. Uh, the sugar here comes from the balsamic, the sugar there comes from the muscat. Um, stronger taste, a uh, little more salty, a um, little more uh, in your face, but, but delicious. I think they're, they're both excellent. So most people remember liver from our childhood and we used to hate it. And the reason we used to hate it is because it was almost always overcooked. Uh, liver is a very delicate cut of meat. And when it's overcooked, it becomes leather. When it's undercooked, it's mud. So this is the perfect Goldilocks of liver. Incredible, tasty, succulent. Not your mother's liver. Exactly. You're right, Evan, that liver back in the day, there was nothing done to it. And also nothing with the onions. They, it was all just thrown in the pan and the onions were supposed to take care of the liver. And no one took care of the onions first like you guys did here and they're fantastic on their own. And I haven't had liver in years and this is really good. Thank you, Bob. Honored, thank you. I think this is a draw. I, I like them both a lot. This liver is excellent. That liver is fantastic. This liver is excellent. And Evan, I wouldn't have thought of that. Obviously, liver, liver and onions go together. Much like you, haven't had it in ages. Would have never thought of that for our onion challenge today, and it's fantastic. That is fantastic. That is not what we, and I, we're probably all gonna collectively agree, what, not what we remember from mom's liver. No offense to mom, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, this begs a big question, Paul. What is our next uh, cook-off going to be? Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. I know how to do onions. Now I think I know how to do liver. Um, Sausages? I mean, oh, summertime. We can we be grilling upstairs, for God's sakes. That is an excellent idea. Let's Challenge do accepted. Let's do that. Challenge accepted. Perfect. Bob, your onions are perfect. If we, if we do... Um, if we do lamb chops, I'll participate. We can do lamb chops as well. I'm game for that anytime. <laughs> My friends, thank you very much. This was a uh, beautiful session of Shakers, and uh, hope we all learned something today. I do is that I really like food. So, cheers. Cheers. cheers.